but everything is going well so far. Touch wood, with some wood. Right, so we have bought the 1996 Suzuki X90. We've got a permit through New South Wales, and we're gonna go and get some petrol for it, and then begin the long journey home. Right, I've just fueled up and aired up. So now the question is, can we make it all the way home? So the car is making a bit of a rattling noise under low, the engine is, I should say, but uh, I'm hopeful that that's just from lack of use and uh, bad petrol I've just put in Gee, nearly a full tank of, uh, of fuel, unless the fuel gauge is playing up. It does seem to be sounding a little better, so hopefully it's just lack of use. Still there a little bit under load, but it was clattering away up the hill away from the, uh, the house where it was kept initially. clutch is very late to take up it's not impossible to deal with it's just a lot higher than it should be either that or the clutch is already giving out I'm leaving the window down because the window is not in so I hope it doesn't rain the fellow took the window out because it didn't work and he wanted to be able to move the vehicle around on his property and have a window down. So uh, the window is in the boot and hopefully should just go straight into the window regulator that apparently is on the, on the blink. In fact, I think I saw the window regulator in the boot as well. So there may be nothing in this door at all to uh, support a window. But that's just as well because I, I'm sort of picking up a bit of exhaust smell. Can't be much 
there's not much car to sort of catch it. We did notice that the back of the exhaust is rusted off where it should get, it should meet the bumper it sort of finishes well before the bumper so maybe it's not pushing the exhaust far enough beyond the car to keep it away from me and some of it's being sucked back into the window here from the force of the wind see that's that noise is gone now so there you go maybe it just needed to have get a get a run and uh, get some fresh fuel So apart from the noise, it's driving very nicely. The tyres are nine years old and they were at 15 PSI when we went to the service station. So we put them up to the recommended, Suzuki recommended PSI of just 23. And now it's a case of seeing how we go with the long trip home. I'm still in New South Wales. Got a couple more kilometres to go before I cross the border. And the unregistered vehicle permit that I've got covers me from uh, Terranora all the way home. Probably 160, 170 kilometres. But yes, as I think I mentioned, these are based on the Vitara. Underneath, they're a Vitara minus the rear seats. And when they were launched, I was so struck by them, I rang up the Suzuki dealer at Maruka and said, what is that thing sitting in front of your dealership up on, up on a big uh, platform? And he, uh, your salesman, told me it was an X90. This was in 1996. And this is a 1996. I don't think they lasted more than a couple of years. They weren't particularly popular, only a two-seater, so if it was between this and a uh, Vitara, if you were looking to transport more than yourself, you'd probably go for the Vitara. Right, we're nearly onto the highway. Just got a traffic light here to deal with, and then we'll be on our way. Temperature's good. When we inspected the car this morning, we left the engine running for quite a while, idling. And the temperature didn't move, which is good. And then we also gave it a bit of a, uh, a rev up in the driveway, and that was also fine. Unfortunately, we couldn't do anything more than just drive it along their front lawn because it wasn't uh, registered and they weren't willing fair enough to uh, have the car on the road mostly because they have a police officer living in their little street and he certainly knows the rules he's informed them a couple of times of uh, things they better watch out for on trailers and such so the first time I drove it was away from the house Right, well that's the first thing on the list. I'll have to get a little blind spot mirror because the uh, C pillar behind me perfectly obscures what's there. Even worse than the Mighty Boy, in fact. You can stick your head out and have a look, of course. And when we tested it this morning, the roof wasn't in. It was uh, in the boots. And unfortunately, I didn't have a close enough look at the roof. I've put the roof bits back in just in case we get any rain or anything. And unfortunately, there's a bit of rust on uh, the driver's side one. There's a metal strip that goes along the top. And uh, it's lifting up at the very front. So, unfortunately, 
there's that bit of rust. There's also a tiny bit of rust at the C pillar on the passenger side. Any second now, I'll be back in my home state. Incidentally, when we went to inspect the car this morning, we wanted to open the bonnet. Couldn't offer the life of me find the catch. It's in the glove box. Who'd have thunk it? And I'm back in Queensland. There we go. And the traffic is stopping. This will be fun. Typical Japanese Suzuki layout. Everything's very logical and well placed. No aircon. There is a blank there to tease me. Some of them did come with it. I recall that much. And what have we got? Uh, Clarion Radio. I don't know whether that's original. I doubt it. Clock doesn't seem to work. Ashtray and cigarette lighter. Gearbox and uh, the uh, high and low range below that and the handbrake. And then around the actual binnacle, there's pretty much just rear window to mister and front, front fog lights. So not much to play with. So in New South Wales, when you want to get an unregistered vehicle permit, you have to go to a service New South Wales outlet. Unlike Queensland, where you can do it all on your phone in the driveway of the house that you're buying the car from to get your uh, permit set up straight away. In Queensland, I think it's uh, $79, $80 thereabouts. So in New South Wales, uh, we had to go to a service New South Wales outlet, which thankfully was open on a Saturday morning and line up and get a number and then uh, I had to get a customer number from them and then I was able to get oops right toilet stop and now we're back on our way again right as I was saying when I was so rudely interrupted by uh, you falling off the uh, little holder here <clears throat> was that I went to service New South Wales and had to stand in line and get it all done over the counter they were open on a Saturday morning but instead of costing me $79, $80 it cost me $26 I think for a permit as long as I needed it if I needed three days to get to Cairns no problem $26 whereas Apparently, Queensland charges by the day. <clears throat> so there you go. Things you learn about different states and how they operate. So for the sake of having to line up on a Saturday morning and fill out some forms with a pen instead of on my phone, I saved 50 odd bucks. The right hand blinker seems to be a little bit unwilling to turn itself off <coughs> at times. I'll have to investigate that. When we stopped for the toilet stop for my uh, guardian in the car behind me, I went to the boot and pulled out the little insert that sits in the uh, glass target top to keep the sun off me. So the uh, other side is still open, but this side is shielded from the sun, which is good. It's got two grabbers on it, two sort turn and sort of lock-in points. The passenger side appears to only have one, but uh, I'm sure it'll still sit in there reasonably enough. There's no stickers under the bonnet to tell me anything's been done. There is a... Uh, 
service sticker on the windscreen saying that presumably it was uh, serviced around 7,000 kilometres ago and it was due to be done in late 2016 so that's five years ago six years ago so I'm not enjoying the fact that I'm driving home with oil that's presumably five or six years old I did check it this morning it was still honey coloured and plenty of it there but so uh, obviously one of the first things this will get is a change of oil and filter among other things the seats fold forward in this uh, car because there is a little storage area behind them just a very small 10 centimeters across perhaps and apart from that the only other storage is in the boots and the boot has got a spare wheel in there so it's not a car with a lot of storage there are not even any door pockets they seem to have um, provided uh, big open grills for the speakers but uh, no actual door pocket behind that as some makers do so it's not a car that can carry a heap of stuff including people shots from the rifle range. Well, 160 odd kilometres later, closer to 170, including the uh, toilet stop, we are home. And uh, I didn't really have any major dramas. Now I've just got to figure out a way to close this up for the night.